This is Lab Medicine Rounds, a curated podcast for physicians, laboratory professionals, and students. I'm your host, Justin Kreuter, the Bowtie Bandit of Blood, a transfusion medicine pathologist at Mayo Clinic. As we've experienced snow and colder weather here in Minnesota, we thought it would be fun to continue to travel south and connect with some of our colleagues at the other Mayo Clinic campuses over these winter months. And today we're rounding with Dr. Yasmin Butt and Brittany Thiel. Dr. Butt is an assistant professor of laboratory medicine and pathology, and Brittany is a medical student, both of them at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. And what we're going to be talking about today is talking about they've started a pathology interest group. Um, and what we want to do is kind of explore that because I think that'll be really interesting for our audience. So thank you for joining us today, Dr. Butt and Brittany. Thanks thank for you. having us. Awesome. So Let's get started, because uh, this is an important thing, I think, to give our listeners, we're really talking about this pipeline of, of you know, attracting very talented students into uh, pathology and uh, laboratory medicine. Uh, from your points of view, uh, why do you think it's important to start a pathology interest group? Yeah, I can start that um, from a student's perspective. So I'm applying APCP this cycle to um, be a pathology resident. And for me, I felt very fortunate coming into medical school because I already had some background seeing what a pathology um, career would look like, what pathologists do, uh, et cetera. But coming into medical school, there's a huge emphasis on clinical experiences that involve direct patient care a lot of times, as it should, um, because students have to learn how to cultivate skills to do a history, a physical exam, et cetera. So they get exposure to a lot of specialties in medicine, but one that is unfortunately not front and center tends to be pathology. And that's somewhat unfortunate because as some of the pathologists here have said, Pathology is one of the best kept secrets in medicine, but it shouldn't be a secret because it's such a great career option for students. So starting an interest group is important for students to be able to see what pathologists do. We have pathologists who teach courses at the medical school who help students um, with their histology or pathology, for example, but that doesn't tell students what the day-to-day ins and outs of a job in pathology looks like. And so to be able to have a group where students can see what an anatomic pathologist does at the scope or what somebody who is a laboratory manager or transfusion medicine, something like that, um, they can actually see what that looks like and hear about it and hopefully then put it on their list of things that maybe they'd be interested in going into. So that is something that's important for an interest group and bringing that careers in pathology option to the table for students in the school. And I think whether students choose to go into pathology or something else, it's useful for them because pathology touches every aspect of patient care. And so down the road, even if they're in internal medicine or something, they'll know where their biopsy is going. They'll know who to call if they have a question about blood bank or something with the lab. So there are a lot of advantages to having a pathology interest group and exposing students to pathology. And then I think finally, uh, myth busting is kind of a big deal. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions around pathologists and you know being kind of reclusive in the basement or something and being able to see pathologists and interact with them and hear what their day-to-day looks like and their interactions with clinicians and that sort of thing has been really good for students. And a lot of students have come up to me and said, oh, wow, I didn't realize pathologists actually, you know, some of them see patients or that they actually interact with clinicians throughout the day or that sort of thing. And so to be able to kind of myth bust is helpful too. It's awesome. Dr. Butt, kind of from your perspective, it's a faculty (laughs) mentor, like, uh, you know, I imagine you kind of bring a lot of some, some of the similar perspectives that, that Brittany brings, but also some uh, additional ones. Absolutely. I I think that was so well put, Brittany. I almost have nothing else to add to it. Um, You know, but I think from from a faculty perspective and just from our from our specialty in general, there is a lack of understanding uh, in the in the medical school community. And honestly, sometimes in our colleagues and practicing physicians of what pathologists do. And just like you said about myth busting, the idea that, oh, well, all your patients are dead. You only do autopsies, right? And that could not be farther from the truth. That said, autopsies are a great source of education. And I am an autopsy fan myself. I always have to add that caveat in there. However, the majority of the things that I do day to day 
don't have the patients are alive and we're trying to help to keep them that way and help guide treatment. Um, so certainly having that pathology interest group is really valuable. And I think especially from a medical school perspective, it's really useful to have a place for students to go, like a touch point if they want to find out more about pathology. And that is compounded by the fact that there isn't a required pathology rotation. Most medical students only interact with pathologists as teachers in their early years, in their first and second year. And so that can lead to a perception that, oh, you know, we're teaching more of the basic science information and and thing and maybe histology, but they don't, as you said, Brittany, they don't have an idea of what it is that we actually do on a day-to-day -day basis and how we impact patient care on almost every level and almost every single specialty. And so I think having a touch point for those students to go to, regardless of whether they want to go into pathology or if they're just interested to learn more about it as a specialty, I think is so valuable. Um, you know, for me, my my thoughts about a pathology interest group are, are, are twofold. One, you want to be able to spark the interest in the couple of students in every class that uh, are potentially going to go into pathology and then to serve, serve as a source of information for those that aren't. I think the more you know about pathology, uh, it will only enhance your medical career going forward because whether or not you're aware of our existence, we're impacting your medical decisions every day. It's well put, uh, both of you. One of the things I, in preparing for this podcast, I was reading, I think just uh, the other day, I saw Cap put out uh, some, a commentary about, um, you know, part of the challenge is uh, demonstrating for medical students what is that actual work of a pathologist look like, uh, which I know, uh, Brittany, you very well articulated. And so I'm kind of curious if you could kind of explain for our listeners who, you know, maybe they don't have a pathology interest group and they're looking to maybe uh, start one up, or maybe people have a, an established interest group, but they're kind of looking at, uh, you know, uh, retooling uh, critically examining on what can they kind of work forward uh, on the next uh, year. So what are some important elements that you think are um, important for a successful interest group in your experience? So that's a great question. Um, and as you mentioned, Cap, um, I'm also involved in the CAP pathologist pipeline uh, initiative. And because it's something that is really important to looking to the future of our specialty is recruiting the next generation of people into our specialty. And I, I think there are a couple of successful elements you can integrate into any pathology interest group, regardless of size. Um, one of the one of the simplest and easiest things you can do is create a round table uh, workshop type event for first years. You know, try to gather folks from AP, from CP, from different areas, uh, you know, to give students the ability to ask questions about what it is to be a pathologist. And so those are very simple events to set up. Um, even in the Zoom age, you can set them up um, on Zoom um, or ideally if you can have them in person. And and just to have interested students in, in first year come. Uh, oftentimes I think uh, these medical students don't realize or think about pathology as a viable career until maybe they do an elective in their fourth year. Um, I've known actually more than one person who did an elective in fourth year after they matched another specialty and decided they wanted to change and go into pathology. So it does happen. Uh, and so creating that workshop event or you know just kind of like a round table with pathologists, I think, um, geared mainly towards first years, but certainly second years and third years as well, uh, to give them an idea and different perspectives of the different types of careers you can have in pathology, because that is something I think is quite valuable about the specialty is you can have such a wide variety of careers. And you can be an anatomic pathologist and look at biopsies all day. You can be in blood bank and, you know, be managing apheresis patients and dealing with you know, reactions and it, totally different, totally different worlds, but under the same, under the same umbrella. So I think that's the number one thing that would be very simple to do. And allows you to contact with students who may be interested. And after that, there is so many different um, ideas of activities and CAP has a lot of ideas that they've put up on their website, um, which are definitely worth looking at. If you have a small group or you're thinking about starting a group, um, they can range from you know, if you have a, a strong cytology area, you could do FNA clinics. That's something that we actually are in the process of planning uh, for our group now that some of our COVID restrictions have lifted. And that's a really hands-on procedure and does highlight one of the ways that pathologists do actually have direct patient contact, you know, doing fine needle aspiration um, biopsies on patients in, in a clinic setting. So you can set up something like that uh, would be very nice. Um, we also had uh, a nice uh, event uh, with um, donating blood that Brittany, that Brittany Brittany spearheaded, which is really nice. So we had a competition between all the different uh, medical school classes on who could donate uh, as who could donate the most blood, and and that was run by the pathology interest group. So that was really nice. Um, so so basically, 
um, exposure also, you can set up lab tours. You can have, you can say, hey, you know, if you're interested in coming to see what the lab is like, see the histology lab, see the uh, clinical chemistry lab, the microbiology lab, you know, invite them to plate rounds. You know, those are always fun. Uh, so, so those are opportunities where you can engage medical students in the practice uh, of pathology. I'm glad you know. mentioned that resource yeah. that we can put in the show notes. Yes, I think it's an excellent resource. The CAP has put a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort into coming up with ideas and, and helpful things that people can do, you know, and, and everyone's going to have a different capacity uh, to, to do some of these activities. But I think there's something for every group, for every size uh, that they can do uh, on that on that website. Wonderful. So, Brittany, I'm kind of curious, uh, Dr. Butts kind of talked about the, all these uh, wonderful uh, ideas to integrate and is very involved, uh, you know, really at the national level in kind of, uh, you know, this pipeline of, of brilliant folks attracting into the field. Uh, you know, from your perspective, what you've seen with the medical students that have been involved with the group, uh, is is there one or two activities that really kind of stands out as has been perceived as really the most valuable and, and uh, best experiences so far? Yes. So really the experiences that are linked to courses that they are currently in tend to be the most successful. So it tends to recruit people who may otherwise not come to those events and then discover, oh, that's quite interesting. So one of the events that was very successful was the first year's anatomy course. Um, we had the general um, chief medical examiner from the medical examiner's office here in our county come and speak about forensic pathology. And a lot of students were really interested in that and thought it was very fascinating hearing kind of the public health side of, of forensic pathology as well as what they do with autopsy that was really interesting to them. And I've gotten students since then who've been really interested in wanting to observe an autopsy or wanting to spend some time over at the ME's office. So that's been, that was very successful and it correlated well with what they were learning in their course. Um, and then kind of what Dr. Butt mentioned about the round table, that's also been a very successful event for us because students can really get a glimpse into what the various specialties in pathology are. And especially um, during their pathology course where that's kind of more on the forefront of their mind, they're more apt to come and explore what that might look like. So those two, I think, have been some of our more successful events and have really garnered student interest. You know, one of the things that just popped in my head right now, you know, we put some emphasis on understanding what is that work that a pathologist is doing. And I'm curious, you know, for some of us, you know, as we get into practice longer, we sort of forget that beginner's mindset. And I'm kind of curious, has, has there been any, um, you know, challenge with some faculty being able to explain or demonstrate their work or, um, you know, is there any way to kind of, that it's been important to kind of coach faculty um, so that they can, or direct faculty during a session so that they can really truly show what is the work that they're doing? Well, that's a really good question, and I'll have Dr. Butt elaborate on that a bit more, <laughs> but one of the things I will say is that here um, at Mayo, Arizona, I feel like a lot of the pathologists are educators at heart. I feel like they really have been involved in our courses, and they really want to teach and have been enthusiastic about that, so from my perspective as a student, I've, I haven't seen any situation where I thought, ooh, maybe that didn't go so well. Like really they were, they came in ready and eager to talk to students and able to articulate what they do in a way that students can understand. So I feel like from my perspective, I haven't, but Dr. Butt, you've interfaced with them more than I have, so. Well, I'm glad to hear that we've had a, a positive impact and, and come across as good educators. Certainly, that's what we all strive for. Um, that, that really is an interesting question. Uh, I, I would say I have not run into that personally. And I think part of that is just by selection bias. So certainly the people that show interest in coming to these roundtables and the people that are involved in teaching medical students, you know, it's essentially a volunteer basis in our department. I mean, certainly the, the teaching needs to happen, but there are enough people that want to teach that are involved. So we don't, we're, we're not dragging anybody kicking and screaming to, to teach our courses. So I think we've had generally positive, um, positive experiences with that from the faculty side. But I could see perhaps um, if there was uh, a program where everyone had to teach and maybe not everyone would prefer to teach, uh, certainly um, 
there might be useful resources. Maybe CAP has useful resources saying how to how to explain your job to a medical student. But um, I think I think a self selection bias is important there to have people actually interested and invested in education and reaching out to medical students, being the people um, that interact with medical students most. And I'll say that, you know, medical school curriculum, this is a little bit of a tangent, but um, it, it touches a little bit on what we were talking about before with involvement uh, on course on the course level, because I do agree, I think, as much as you can link your events and your interactions with the courses that the students are taking, because let's face it, medical school is all consuming. You're spending hours and hours a day studying. You don't have a lot of time for extra things. I think is is those those activities that link to the courses are going to have the most success. And so certainly, you know, medical school curriculum is changing and it's changing across the country, both at Mayo Clinic and, and everywhere else to a more integrated, uh, more integrated uh, type of curriculum where you're trying to bring everything together. So rather than having discrete ways of learning, okay, we're going to learn, we're going to learn the histology of this and histology, and then you're going to learn the physiology of this when you do the cardiac block and everything more separated, we're going into more combined ways of educating students. And so I think then the, um, the burden or onus, whatever word you want to use, falls back on pathology faculty to become as involved as possible as they can with these more integrated um, curriculum courses. Because if we're not there to talk about our, our portion of these things, then we're going to get lost in, in the background. And it's not that we're not doing the work, but no one realizes that we do it. Uh, time and time again, you know, when I talk to people outside of medicine and they're like, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, you know, I, I diagnose cancer. And they're like, oh yeah, so-and-so got a diagnosis of cancer from their oncologist. And I'm like, actually that came from a pathologist. So, so we're very easily lost in the background um, if we're not advocating for our specialty and educating about what we do. So I think as much as, you know, from a faculty perspective, as much as you can step up and become integrated, be at the table, get involved in those courses, I think the better off you'll do. Um, um, but from a pathology interest group, something that we're doing here, uh, so we have gross labs uh, incorporated into our MS1 pathology course, of course, uh, of course, of course. Uh, but for some of the other courses, we don't always. So uh, our cardiac black uh, block does, but pulmonary doesn't. And so, uh, of course, I would like to have things integrated into the into the uh, courses themselves, but that's not always possible because we have more and more limited time um, to go over these classes and to get into lecture, you give this material. So time is always limited. So a potential pathology interest group um, activity that you can do is a gross lab session. You know, collect a bunch of interesting specimens. And when the students are going through, say, for example, their pulmonary block, you know, have 15 cases of lung cancer, sarcoidosis, interstitial lung disease, whatever cool cases you can get together and just have an event and have them come. And you can say, hey, you learned about this in class. Here's what the actual cancer looks like grossly, like not just from a PowerPoint picture. Why don't you hold it? <laughs> so, so I think, you know, linking those activities as much as you can to the actual courses um, provides a really valuable and literally, in some cases, hands-on experience. <laughs> And I should say, um, you can see Dr. Butt's enthusiasm with all of this. And so when starting an interest group at, at any location, it's so important to have someone like Dr. Butt who is very excited about medical student education and really furthering pathology. And so for me, it was great. And I think any student who might be interested in starting a pathology interest group, look for a faculty member who is excited and really interested in get, getting the whole department involved and helping to really start these things because I think Dr. Butt has been absolutely instrumental in making a lot of these things happen and really helping to bring pathologists on board to join and be part of these events. So that's critically important for, for students who want to start a, an interest group. So is, you know, we're recording this in February of 2022, COVID and the pandemic is still, you know, a, a present reality for us. And I'm kind of curious about has uh, the pandemic uh, had an impact on how you approached the pathology interest group? Yes. <laughs> so we started the group um, in March of 2020. So as you can imagine, that was right when, you know, everything kind of shut down. And that made it somewhat challenging to really start 
stu engaging students right off the bat. So we did a lot of, um, we did two Zoom uh, events right off the top that were that were good. And it's it's difficult, I think, sometimes when students are get, trying to understand what a new group is to then join with Zoom and all of that. So it took a little bit of doing, but I think especially now as restrictions have kind of um, lessened a bit and we were able to do some in-person events with more social distancing. Students have been a lot more engaged and it's easier to interface with them and have them ask questions and interact with them um, even after the event's over. So that has been good, but it certainly was a little bit challenging to get it off the ground at first because we really had to think creatively on what can we present to students over Zoom. And I think everyone in the world was thinking, how can we present things over Zoom? So we were just kind of caught in that as well. Yeah, totally agree. Um, you know, Brittany has been an amazing advocate. She she came to me with the idea of starting a pathology interest group. So so kudos there for making this happen. Um, but we could do very we could do minimal things uh, because of COVID. And I think, like like you said, we were all stuck in that same sort of doldrums of, well, we can only do what we can do over Zoom. So I think having those round tables was really valuable. At least we were able to connect with students who showed some interest um, in pathology uh, through that. But I am so grateful that restrictions have started to lift and we're actually able to do more things in person because I think best teaching happens in person. I really strongly believe that. And that goes for pathology, you know, and any other type of teaching. There, There's always gonna be a limitation with Zoom when you're far away and you're not in person um, and you're giving your talk to a blank screen, <laughs> you know, and everyone has their cameras off and you don't know what's going on. Are they sleeping? What's happening? Are they just gonna listen to it later and speed me up? So <laughs> that's fine, <laughs> but but in person is always the best. So, so hopefully things will only improve from here on out. I mean, that makes my medical educator heart go pitter patter. I mean, this, <laughs> you know, the, the relationship is, is very important, right? Between uh, learner and mentor, this whole idea of being a guide on the side, helping our learners uh, construct uh, what we know in our heads and their own heads, that, that takes work, that takes guidance. And certainly that uh, video off uh, Zoom, that, that connection is, is, problematic at best, maybe. <laughs> I'm curious then, you know, we've kind of gone through it. And one of the things that really resonates with me, I'm sure for our audience too, is that, you know, you're really highlighting for me this concept of it's not just, uh, you know, pathology interest group, people that are interested in the career of pathology. But I think that you've made the point very well here that, it's also for those who want to be able to use pathology in their career. In other words, it's, it's time well spent. It's value add, uh, regardless of what specialty somebody might choose. Um, and that, that's really impacted me with what you guys have said today. And I'm curious, you know, as you go forward in the future of this interest group, you know, what are your thoughts for, you know, how, how are you planning to be iterative and try next year that you didn't try this year? What are ways that you're interested in moving this forward? I think that that's a really good point that you pulled out and I, I couldn't agree more. You know, this is, I think a pathology interest group is not just for people who wanna go into pathology. Certainly those will be the people that will be most invested in, you know, go to every event and, and be involved in it. But, you know, it, it comes back to basic values that the needs of the patient come first. And in my mind, the more our future physicians know about pathology and what pathology can do for them and aid them in the care of their patients in the future, the better physicians that they'll be. And so creating events like the blood drive that Brittany put together and, you know, like gross lab presentations where you can see different specimens and really gain an understanding, um, a visceral understanding of, of what it is, these disease processes that you're learning about observing an autopsy. You know, you may be a, an ICU doctor in the future and, you know, you may remember, oh yeah, I observed that autopsy and they found out some fascinating information that we didn't even think about. And, you know, maybe that can be useful and that you might be more likely to send for an autopsy and learn something and advance your, your knowledge and your colleagues' knowledge and might turn out better for a patient in the future. So, so I think there's so much value to be had by educating students on what their pathology colleagues can do for them in the future in whatever field that they choose to go into. And so I think creating events, I mean, honestly, all the events 
I think would be valuable for anybody potentially, uh, regardless of what field they go into, um, but perhaps they can tailor made it tailor it towards what their area of interest is. You know, if you're planning on going into neurosurgery or neurology, maybe spend a week shadowing the neuropathologist at your institute. You're, you're going to learn a lot, I guarantee you. Um, so, so I think that that provides a lot of value. Um, I'm curious, you, anything else you wanted to add, uh, Brittany, on that ideas we have for the future? <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I think you said it very well. It's it's so important to have students be exposed to pathology and all that it is. And I and like you said, even if they go into you know various clinical specialties, pathology touches just every aspect. So knowing who to call, knowing what pathologists do, and even wait times. Oh, I took a biopsy. I'm not going to get it an hour later. You know the results. <laughs> you know knowing right. those things is very important. And so I I think looking into the future as well for this group. It's just kind of keeping the momentum going and finding more ways to kind of curate the experiences to the curriculum and also to student interest. I know that certain classes now have people who are more interested in certain subspecialties than others. So there are certain events then that you might think, oh, okay, maybe we'll do something more with this type of pathology subspecialty or this other one, depending on student interest as well. So really kind of feeling that out, it is kind of an adaptable thing and remembering that um, it's going to help students down the road, whether they go into pathology or not. So fingers crossed, we'll get some more people going into pathology because that's super important. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> We've been rounding with Dr. Butt and uh, Brittany Thiel on pathology interest groups that they started here at Mayo Clinic in Arizona. Thank you both for being here with us today for this Lab Medicine Rounds. Thank you so much thank for you. having us. <laughs> So to our listeners, uh, thank you for joining us today. We invite you to share your thoughts and suggestions via email. Please direct any suggestions to mcleducation at mayo.edu. If you've enjoyed Lab Medicine Rounds podcast, please follow or subscribe. And until our next rounds together, we encourage you to continue to connect lab medicine and the clinical practice through insightful conversations.